Hello everyone and welcome to Ed Research Clinics. I am Dr. Gunjan Desa and today we are going to continue our discussion on fistula in ENO. So if you have seen our previous video, we discussed the various definitions and the parts or anatomy of a fistula. We saw the internal external openings, what is a blind drag, the various perianal spaces. And we ended our discussion on this slide, which shows the various classifications of fistula in ENO. So now we will see one by one the parts classification, how to differentiate high and low fistula in ENO, simple versus complex fistulas and the American Gastroenterology Association statement on simple and complex fistulas. And we will look at the MRI based classification, which is also known as St. James University Hospital classification. Like I said, Crohn's perianal disease is a separate topic altogether. And we will see the top class classification when we discuss Crohn's perianal disease as a separate extension of this series. So now, Parks classification, if you remember the previous video, I gave a mnemonic ITSE itse. If you remember this mnemonic, it becomes easy. Or if you understand the concept, it becomes easy. Remember this figure for the rest of your life. If you have forgotten what we discussed last time, it's important to revise the internal sphincter, the external sphincter, the deep superficial and subcutaneous external sphincter. And it is actually this that divides high and low or simple and complex, which you will see one by one. So now going into parts classification, what is ITSE type 1 is I, that is the intersphinctric type and it is the most common. Type 2 is transsphinctric, it extends through both the sphincters, so that is transsphinctric. Type 3 is suprasphinctric, so it goes above the external sphincter, suprasphinctric but the opening may still be low. And type 4 is extra sphincteric. What that means is that it is outside the sphincter, basically arising from ischiorector or ischioanal pathology or a supralevator pathology which is tracking down. So intersphincteric, you can see ending between the two sphincters, trans sphincteric, supra sphincteric, and extra sphincteric. So if you can understand, the names are based on external sphincter involvement. So going into the intersphincteric fistula, as we saw the anatomy of intersphincteric fistula, this is a classical. You can see the internal opening, external opening, and the perianal space involved is intersphincteric space. It can have a high blind tract, and this is important to understand because you will need to lay open in this plane, then you have to drain the high blind tract. Sometimes the intersphincteric fistulas can have two internal openings. There is one high opening and one low opening. So that is a variant. There can be an abscess with no external opening. And this is also an intersphincteric abscess. Extrarectal extension can be seen above the external sphincter along the levator. That is also possible. And sometimes there can be an anastomotic leak which is tracking down in the intersphincteric space. And this is above downwards pathology. So nearly 70% of all fistulas arise in this manner. They are intersphincteric fistulas. Most are from below upwards. An intersphincteric cryptogranular theory based abscess, which then traverses and causes the classical or a blind tract, multiple internal openings, multiple external openings. It very less common is the above downwards pathology. So now going into transphincteric and suprasphincteric, as we saw, if it traverses both the sphincters, it's a transphincteric abscess. It will go into the ischiorectal or ischioanal space somewhere and then drain externally. A high blind tract can be possible even in this variance. And this is seen in around 25% cases of fistula. So transphincteric accounts for around 25% of cases. It's a result usually of an ischioanal abscess. Going into suprasphincteric fistula, like I said, it will go above the external sphincter, but the opening may be still at the dentate. High blind tract is possible and this will be a supralevator blind tract and these are all high fistulas. They are 5% of all fistulas and usually result from a supralevator abscess. So ITS and extrasphincteric fistula, as we discussed, they are always high. 
So now going into high and low, low is basically fistula which involves the lower third of the external anal sphincter or the intersphincteric space. So as we saw, there are three parts, subcutaneous, superficial and deep. If only one third of the external sphincter is involved, that's a low fistula. Usually it is intersphincteric or transphincteric low. So type 1 or type 2 and low with no high blind track or no second opening. That is basically low fistula. High on the other end is defined in various studies as a fistula which will involve the upper two-thirds of the external anal sphincter or pass above the puborectalis. This can be intersphincteric or transphincteric high. IS is intersphincteric. This is transphincteric. All supraspinteric and all extraspinteric or translevator fistulas are high fistulas, right? So many confusions in low and high. Remember this slide, low is lower one third, high is upper two thirds of external inner sphincter or puborectalis involvement. Now going into simple and complex and remember the Parks classification forms the basis of these two. So this is the American Gastroenterology Association segregation of what is simple or what is complex and if you will see something all high are complex and this is because the sphincter saving becomes difficult in high fistulas in eno remember that the basic treatment of fistula in eno can be divided into two where you are going to save the sphincter or where the sphincter is going to be compromised in all the cases where a lot of external sphincter is involved these are going to be complex fistulas in ANO. So all high cases, cases with multiple external openings, cases with perianal abscess or rectovaginal fistula, again a high fistula, anorectal stricture or active rectal Crohn's disease. All these cases are complex fistulas in ANO. As you can add to this list is an anterior fistula in female patients is very complex because the vaginal opening is very close and the surgery is also complex. And this is also classified as complex fistula, anterior fistula in female patients. All other fistulas are simple fistulas. So that is the difference between simple and complex fistula in ANO, also known as the American Gastroenterology Association classification of fistula in ANO. Now we will see the MRI is separately an MRI fistulography, but just to complete this classification topic, St. James University Hospital classification of perianal fistula is an MRI-based classification. Remember that there are five types and then there are others. Others are basically the fistulas that are not described in the Parks or St. James classification. This is a very rare category. Usually you will have intersphincteric, transphincteric, supralevator. If you see the James University Hospital classification, it is also more or less like the parts classification. Grade 1 and 2 is I, grade 3 and 4 is T, grade 5 is S or E. Grade 1 is simple intersphincteric, no abscess. Grade 2 is intersphincteric with an intersphincteric abscess or a secondary fistulous tract. Grade 3 is transphincteric, so T. Grade 4 is T with abscess or secondary tract leading to issue anal fossa. And grade 5 is S and E, supralevator and translevator disease. So that is how St. James University Hospital classification is formed. Like I said, the Crohn's classification we will discuss separately. And in the upcoming part of this series, we will now go towards clinical presentation and diagnosis of fistula in ANO. With that, we will proceed then towards investigation and then towards surgery. So a very detailed description in an essence, a resource for you to understand this disease and also use these videos to understand when you see your patients that this anatomical orientation of various classifications of fistula is very important. And you will see when we discuss the surgical options that without understanding anatomy, Doing a fistula surgery is nearly impossible. Thank you.